Hi, first graders. Today I wanna to talk to you about making a puppet show from the story, My Father's Dragon by Bruce Stiles Skinner. Uh, there are four main parts that I wanna talk about today and I'll do some little lessons to show some ways that you can make props and make characters. So first I wanna talk about the acts. Acts are the different moments in the story of the play where different events take place. And I don't wanna give away too much of the story, but in the beginning of the play, the main, or in the story, the main character, Elmer, is in a different place than the end of the story. He is at home for some parts, he's packing his bag in some parts, and um, those different parts of the story can be separated into acts if we make the story into a play. And the characters are the people in the book or in the play who take action or who the action is about. And usually those are people or animals, sometimes they're objects, but usually they're people or animals. In this book, some of the characters are Elmer Elevator and many different kinds of animals. The other thing that we're gonna play with today are creating props for the setting. The setting is where the action of the story takes place and the setting changes throughout the story. So in the beginning, the setting of the story is different than the middle and where each of the actions take place. So some of the um, props I've used show the different settings of the book. This uh, little diorama here is mostly of Wild Island. I put in some vines, made it a pasta, I made some big tall trees, some bushes. Um, I also made uh, this set of black rocks to represent the transition from the beginning of the book and the different settings in the beginning of the book to the middle of the book. And each chapter in My Father's Dragon has a really helpful title and that can help us determine the acts. So the next thing I wanna talk about is props and the backdrops and how we can bring the story to life. So I made a little stand-up puppet for Elmer right here. And if I grab his tab, I can kind of make him move around. But after I made him, I realized he was facing the wrong direction. So now I have to make a new one. So I just wanted to show on cardboard what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna like make this new one. And to make this character look like the character Elmer in the book, and so that people know, viewers know who it is, I'm gonna think about what makes this character recognizable. And in the story, he's wearing a hat and he has his big backpack full of supplies and he has a stripy shirt. Now he has arms, but I haven't decided what to do with them yet, whether I wanna make them at an angle or whether I wanna make them come out. So I'm gonna just leave it like this for now. But he has a striped shirt, that's part of his character. And another big part of his character is that he has big black boots on. So I'm gonna make some lines just to represent that until I um, paint it. And then I'm gonna paint it and cut it out with my regular scissors. And then I'm gonna put, um, a slit on the bottom, and I'm gonna fit a little piece of cardboard in like I did with these crocodiles to hold, have it stand up. The other way I could make it stand up or make it a puppet is to use a straw, is to use a straw like this um, from behind so that I could make this puppet come from below and I could go like this and make him walk around or I could make the straw come out of the back like that and I could have him walk in from this way. So those are some ways we could make him move. Um, but I also made these crocodiles. I mistakenly called them alligators in my first video. But I made these crocodiles and I printed some uh, cardboard with bubble wrap. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. These are some other characters in the book. There's a gorilla and a lion and they haven't been finished because we have props or little additions that tell the story that are gonna be added to these characters based on what has happened in the story, but I don't wanna give it away. And this is Elmer's backpack, which plays a pretty big part in the book. And these are some props that go in there. That's a lollipop. This is some gum, 
So you can make those things to help make the story come alive. And I was trying to show that the story happened in a jungle. So I painted some pasta. There's parts that take place at nighttime. So I made a, a shiny moon out of some shiny bubble wrap. I made these stand up. But I also wanted to let you know, Mo Willems, who is an incredible writer and illustrator, he did a video about making characters and he showed that you can kind of, you don't have to be too fancy. You can even just make um, something and cut it out and just like put it on a cup or you can put it on top of a toilet paper roll to get it to stand up. You could draw it on the toilet paper roll as a character if that's easier for you. Or like this, I did on a pasta box so that we could put props in and out. So you don't have to worry too much um, about how to make it and how to make it stand up. There are many different ways. This is a technique that we learned in our cardboard sculpture. Um, this, I just painted some shiny bubble wrap blue to be um, a body of water. I'm not gonna say which one. Uh, so I just wanted to show you how to print bubble wrap right now. Um, in case you haven't seen it done before, it's not difficult. You may be able to do it with, you may be able to do it with markers, but I haven't tried that. Um, I just do it with regular bubble wrap. I take a section of bubble wrap and I use regular watercolors and I try to get a lot of color on there because it slides around on the plastic. So you just apply the paint to any section. I like to put a lot of different colors to add dimension. I'm using dark green and light green because right now I'm making more parts of the jungle or maybe I'm gonna use this paper to um, be a different animal. For example, if I was gonna do um, rhinoceros, I might do this same technique, but do blacks and grays. I'm gonna put a little bit of black in there, actually black. And I'm gonna put some maybe yellow. You can also use this same technique to um, make rocks or mountains or sand or a beach or the bark of a tree. So that's it, and then we just turn it over onto our paper and press down. And when we press down, it spreads the paint around a little because the plastic from the bubble wrap is quite slippery. So it just sits on the surface. So that is, the, that is how you print on the paper. The other thing I wanted to show was to add texture, to make textured paper, um, paper with the appearance of a texture. You can um, do a rubbing. Maybe you remember our art teachers coming in and teaching us about texture rubbings. You could rub on top of exposed um, corrugated cardboard like that. You could rub on the bottom of your sneakers. You could rub, like I'm taking, um, this is a bag from onions. And I like to save those because I use them for my tangerines. Um, but also I just, I kind of love these textures um, applied directly to the surface or um, used as a rubbing. Uh, you can use the side of a crayon, you can use the side of a pencil and you just kind of hold it down and you rub on top of it, try to get it through. This is two layers. So you can try to get it through one layer. And if it seems like it's causing trouble, try to do it in one direction so you're not pulling the paper. And it just makes a texture like that, which could be um, bark, it could be feathers, it could be anything like that. So that's another te technique that you could use. You can um, find textures all over your house. There's probably the bottoms of pots and pans, cheese graters, all kinds of things like that. So your assignments for this week is to make a puppet of the main character and your favorite character in the book. And then if you're feeling ambitious, um, you can try to make some settings and some props and some sets to make a puppet show about this awesome book. And feel free to write to me if you have questions. Good luck, first graders.